right? So did your investments increase? Did you change your strategies at all? Did you add any more tactics in your strategy? So today we're gonna to be talking about what can you do within the context of saving more, lowering your taxes and investing better in 2022 because time is of the essence. Welcome to the show where we talk about financial concepts, strategies and tips, but certainly not financial advice. My name is Andrew David Courtney. I'm the Principal Advisor of Plenitude Wealth, and I'm here to talk to you about 2022 and what you may want to consider this particular calendar year. All right, so typical disclaimer, please do not take this as personal, inform- as personal advice. This is general information only. Right, so the aim for 2022 has to be getting better. If you can ask yourself, how can you get better in terms of saving more, reducing your taxes and investing better, you will put yourself in a much, much better position than 2021. Right, so you're going to ask yourself, well, what happened in 2021 first and foremost? Did your career develop? Did you save some taxes? And ultimately, what did you do with those saved taxes? Right, were there dividends or profits paid out through to you? Right. What did you do with those dividends? Did you reinvest back into your company or did you reinvest back into your portfolio? Or for some of you, did you buy that jet ski or go on a holiday? I'm not quite sure. Every single person is different. What did your net asset position look like? What does your balance sheet look like? Did your savings grow, right? Did you save more than what you did in 2020? Did your investments grow in value? I certainly hope so. If you invested in the market, man, you would have done a hell of a lot better than people who had cash on the side, right? Because inflation is coming, guys. So what you need to do is make sure that you're building your wealth up towards achieving your financial freedom numbers, right? So did your investments increase? Did you change your strategies at all? Did you add any more tactics in your strategy? So today we're going to be talking about what can you do within the context of saving more, lowering your taxes and investing better in 2022 because time is of the essence and we certainly don't want to be wasting time moving forward. Cool. So what are we talking about here? So things to do differently. Focus on the things that you can control, right? So today I'm going to be talking to you about things you can control, not necessarily what you can't control, like what the government's currently doing, the amount of inflation that's available out in the marketplace that's that's happening and is going to kind of creep up as we go along, right? And other macroeconomic factors that you personally can't control. You ultimately want to look at the levers that you can pull yourself and make sure that you're actively working on the things that you want to do, right, to achieve your goals a hell of a lot faster, right? It's about saving more, reducing taxes, and investing a hell of a lot better. Ask yourself, what are the key things that you need to do to move the needle on those three aspects of your finances? So save more. What you need to do is make sure that lifestyle creep is not something that is happening to you, right? What is lifestyle creep? But ultimately, if your lifestyle cost is at a 45 degree angle, i.e. as your income increases, your lifestyle cost increases, and if you're spending one dollar per one, uh, spending one dollar for each dollar earned, guess what? Your lifestyle creep is at one to one ratio. You ultimately want to change the gradient there so that you can save this much and put that towards the things that you value most. And you want to ultimately pay yourself first. What does that mean? Well, if you can automate cash flow management position or cash flow management strategy that allows you to lower decision fatigue. You choose what are the things that you want or that you value most in life, first and foremost, and you automate that process. Pick a percentage, right? Whether it be a fortnightly payment or a monthly payment, depending on where you're at in your household, right? Put it away towards the things that you value most, right? And then live within your means with whatever is remaining. First and foremost, you know that your financial and lifestyle goals will be taken care of, right? And secondly, you have time on your side. So that's the first thing that you can do. Now, the next thing, to lower your costs somehow. If you happen to have a principal place of residence with a mortgage on it, right, what you can do is you can lower the interest payments by refinancing to another bank, right? If you can find a competitive loan out there and you can save yourself a bunch of cash, well, guess what? You're putting yourself in a much, much better position. So a quick example here, for a client that, that we recently helped, Right? They've got a principal place of residence and an investment property, a total loan of 1.1 mil, right? If we were to refinance that, what we can do is provide them with a saving of 3,000 if it's P&I, 
right? Or $16,000 per annum, or then $2,000 for their investment property. And if you manage to go through and refinance with current banks, right, with a cash bonus associated with it, you can get six up to six to eight thousand dollars, right? So that's a significant amount of cash right there. If they were to go with interest only, right, refinance both loans and get six thousand dollars as cash bonus, that's approximately twenty-four thousand dollars they can save on a year-to-year -year basis. Very, very powerful strategy you may want to consider if you've got a home loan. Right? Now, lowering taxes, what can you do? Well, if you can have a look at what you're currently investing under, i.e. what in entity you're currently investing under, most people are investing under their own names. Now, the issue with this is that upon sale or upon receipt of dividends, right, profits, income, right, what happens is that income goes to their names and get taxed at their marginal tax rate. Right? That's fine for some. Right? You obviously pocket the money, what's remaining. But if you're at 45 cents on the dollar or your marginal tax rate is at 45 cents on the dollar and you're earning more than $180,000 per year, you may want to consider establishing a family trust, right? Because especially if you've got children, what you can do is instead of getting taxed 45 cents on the dollar or 37 cents on the dollar, right? You can distribute those that, that income, that investment income towards people who have lower marginal tax rates. And ultimately, once you get once you tap everyone out, you can distribute that income towards an asset company with a maximum tax rate of 30%. Right? There's a whole bunch of rules associated with it. I don't have time to go through step by step, but ultimately it's about making sure that you're not paying one dollar more than what is necessary. Right? Establishing these entities will allow you to save tax and ultimately allow you to reinvest those tax savings. Right? You may want to consider having a look at your superannuation as well. You can make concessional contributions, pre-tax contributions. Have a look at the catch-up concessional contribution rules because you could literally save yourself twenty, thirty, forty thousand dollars if you do this correctly. Right. The next one is we'll have a look at your current property portfolio. Are you currently negatively geared? Do you have a depreciation schedule in place? Are you currently developing your own property portfolio where you can depreciate the assets that you've recently built? Right? These are the things that you may want to consider if you're trying to save tens of thousands of dollars of taxes per, per year. Right? Moving on, invest better. So what you need to do is consider this. Right? There's a bunch of options available to you guys. Right? So you're going to ask yourself, do you want to Invest in cash, in cash alone. Far too many people are investing in cash, unfortunately. You've got to pick what percentage you want to allocate towards these particular asset classes, right? There's cash, there's the lowest, right? Risk to re return ratio, right? Fixed income, property, shares, crypto, if you're into that, NFTs, if you're really into it, right? You can start your own business. Obviously, the higher the return, the higher the risk. Right? And then if you pepper in some leverage, i.e. good debt, what happens is this can amplify returns, but also amplify losses too. So what you need to do as an investor, if you're trying to get better, is work out, well, what kind of percentage exposure do you want in all of these asset classes? Because what will determine it is your return on investment, what kind of risk you're willing to take on board right, as an investor. Because far too many people are sitting on cash with inflation on the rise, your cash or your buying power of your cash becomes lower and lower every single year. And you need to be extra careful with this because, well, guess what? Over the next 10, 15, 20 years, that dollar is probably going to worth, be worth 70 or 60 cents right? in terms of buying power. So you need to get exposure to other asset classes. You need to consider your portfolio allocation. Right? Are you heavy on defensive asset classes at the moment? Or are you, too, are you taking way too much risk? Right? Are you currently dollar cost averaging into any of these asset classes? You may want to consider getting some exposure. Right? Are you currently utilizing debt to amplify the return on investment? Right? Are you currently doing that? This is all available to you guys. Right? And if you don't know what to do, well, you need to look it up and choose which option and which tactics you want to employ into your particular financial strategy for 2022 because this is how you own your future. If you can consistently get better within the context of saving more, lowering your taxes and investing better, you'll be in a much, much better situation today. 
in five years time, 15, 20 years time, right? Now, quick example here. If you were to do these core things, saving more, reducing taxes and investing better, what you can do is actually save yourself eleven dollars to $12,000 in terms of the saving more part. You can save taxes of 10400 and get an investment return, i.e. a net asset increase of $29,000, right? This is actually a case study from a recent client of ours, right? So that upside of 51845 Now, the issue that most people have is that they do not do anything and they rest on their laurels and hope for the best and fingers crossed they're going to get to their financial goals. Every single year you don't get better as an investor is a year wasted and there's an opportunity cost associated with that. So how much upside can you find in 2022? I suggest you start doing some research or getting help from professionals who can help you achieve the potential that you're currently sitting on. Right. So understanding your 15 year trajectory, right? So what is it all about? You're ultimately trying to build massive momentum in the first five years to get you to your goals, right? In the next 10 or 15 years, right? So quick case study again, this is the recent client that I was talking to you about, right? Their current trajectory is a healthy 3.3 mil over the next 15 years, right? Fantastic, that's great. In their super, they're gonna get to just shy of $1.2 million. But what if you can inject a few other strategies? Because each line is actually a strategy, right? If you can inject a few strategies, i.e., in this scenario here, the trajectories that you can you can add to that equation, right? This particular client can get to 4.5 mil relative to 3.3, right? And bolster their super to 1.6 mil relative to 1.2, right? That's a massive difference relative to where they are. So you've got to ask yourself, well, what are the moves that you can do? What are the moves that you can implement in 2022 to put yourself in a much, much better position in five, 10 or 15 years time, okay? Within the context of getting better in saving more, lowering your taxes and investing a hell of a lot better, right? Because the more you sit on your hands, the less results you're going to get. Now, if you're comparing yourself to the average Australian, the results are going to be just fine. But I have a feeling if you're watching this particular video, you're not really going to be content with what average Australians are getting in terms of results, right? So what I suggest you do is you get your hands dirty, watch a few more videos, read a few more books, work with the right professionals, bring the team together to help you achieve your goals a hell of a lot faster, or get your hands dirty and do it all yourself. It's up to you. Pick your poison. It all depends on how much time you have in your hands, right? Start with the end in mind, very, very important, right? So within the context of finance, there are two key variables, right? Income and capital. How much income would you need in, let's say, call it financial freedom? What does that look like for you? How much income do you need there? Do you need 200, 300, $400,000 to provide a healthy, loving lifestyle or enjoyable lifestyle for yourself and your family, right? And how much capital would one need to produce that kind of income. Now, I don't have enough time to go through all that kind of stuff. It'll be covered on another video later, right? So you can ask yourself, well, these two are intertwined and in how are you currently tracking, right? What's your 15-year trajectory, right? And within the context of your life, how much time do you want for yourself? What kind of time, short-term, medium, and long-term goals do you have for your time and for your health and ultimately for your wealth, right? Because really when it comes down to it is we want to protect our health and we want to protect our time. And we do this by having massive optionality within our finances. Right? How we do that is to get a robust financial platform or foundation, right? So that you can build the vehicle that you need to reach the destination that you want, right? Starting with the end in mind is where it's at. My name is Andrew David Courtney. I thank you for your time and I wish you all the best for 2022. If you've got any questions, comments or concerns, make sure you share it below. If you'd like me to cover off on more kind of financial topics and strategies, make sure you share them in the comments below. Please smash that like button and please subscribe because that helps us with the YouTube algorithm because we're aiming to build this YouTube channel up as best as we can. My name is Andrew Courtney. I wish you all the best for 2022. See you very soon. Ciao.